boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Sons of Scullery. I'm a shit Sam Johnson. Oh, I'm a shit Jesse Brookshire. We got pork belly today on our episode of Sons of Scullery. We're gonna do a little cherry pan sauce, some sauteed Brussels leaves and bacon, and then we're gonna do a little smoked gouda croquette. Croquette, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, and finish it off, we're gonna do a little roasted yellow beet coulee to finish it there, and uh, we'll get this rolling for you right now. Yeah, get it rolling. All right, what we got here is a little pork belly, which is basically a giant piece of uh, bacon. It's the under slab of the pig. So what we're gonna do is we wanna take off this top piece of skin. And you can find any of this pork belly at your local Asian market or your local butcher. What you wanna do is make sure there's a little bit of fat on there on the top just like that there is perfect yeah yeah we're gonna take that off you can make some chicharrones which is a fried pork dish with hot sauce it is great mm, delicious or what we're gonna do here is take these pieces of meat add them to our pile we'll save that for the chicharrones mm -hmm. What we're gonna do next is, uh, Sam, you got that cast iron It's on going strong right oh, there. Nice, all right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear uh, all four sides of this meat. But what you're looking for is that beautiful little fat cap on there with that nice, delicious pork. And uh, we're gonna sear it and then we're gonna braise it. Break it down. Break down! <laughs> Right now what we're going to do is sear this here pork belly off. We're going to throw a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Nice hot cast iron like we do all the time, you know. Go ahead and throw it in there. Nice. What we're going to do is wait till these get nice and crisp on each side. We're going to turn it there, boy. Yes, we are. Get them nice and pretty like ready for the braise. All right, now that those sides caramelized, we're gonna turn them over and check. Exactly what we're looking for right there, that nice dark caramelization. We can go ahead and flip them over here so we can get that other side nice and crisp. Jesse. All right, now what we're gonna do here, pull these out there pan. They got nice caramelization on both sides there. Beautiful, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like first time you get your four wheeling truck out the garage. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, we put that on that plate. Now kids, we're gonna go and make the braise. part of this braised pork belly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little mirepoix going. 
which is basically the holy grail of all vegetable stocks. So Sam's gonna cut up a little celery. We got a little bit of carrot and onion diced up over here. And it's uh, pretty much two parts onion, one part carrot, one part celery. So that's what we have weighed out here. Got about a cup of onion and a half cup each of celery and carrots. So what Sam's gonna do is he's gonna saute that in that pan over there. And we're gonna get a nice little color on those. And we're gonna add the pork that we just seared. And then we're gonna add a little bit of uh, whatever kind of liquid you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little cherry juice, a little cherry jam, and a little chicken stock. And we're gonna throw it in the oven and braise it. Make it nice and delicious. We're gonna add some nice ginger over here to our mirepoix. Just gonna cut it in real thin strips. You don't need too much, about two tablespoons full or so. I prefer to use fresh ginger, although you can use powdered ginger. I wouldn't recommend it though. That's cheating. Go ahead and cut it, julienne it up over here. If you can use fresh, I always use fresh. Anytime you get powdered vegetable or powdered herbs, it's gonna take away from the potency for sure. Just kinda wanna give it a nice little mince over here. Fresh ginger actually chops really, really, really nice and easy too. The older the ginger, it's gonna get really stringy and it's not gonna be very fun to cut up. So, got some nice here. fresh. So we're gonna go ahead and take that and bring it over here into our mirepoix. You drop her right in drop there. Drop her right in there. You'll be able to smell it instantly hits the pan too. So what we're looking for is, uh, just wanna start uh, getting a nice translucent color on those onions, which basically means they're starting to uh, become clear. Sam, add that ginger. We're gonna let that cook for about another minute. And then we're gonna go in with uh, our aromatics. So we got one bay leaf. We got about six or seven cloves of garlic. And this is all for about a pound and a half of uh, pork belly. And then we're gonna go in with some times of sprig and some peppercorns. You can kinda adjust it how you want, but uh, Tablespoon of peppercorns right now. About 10 sprigs of thyme. Jesse, what kind of moonshine is this? That's some of our backwoods cherry moonshine. We got oh, from our oh. good friend Virginia. Oh, good heavens, you got me all excited. I thought it was real moonshine. Yeah. I didn't know no cherry juice. Cherry moonshine. Oh, son of a bee, could have got mm -hmm. me. All right, now we're gonna take our aromatics. It's gonna be our peppercorns, our garlic, our bay leaf, and our thyme. You can go straight into the pan there. Just give it a nice stir, that mirepoix. Let all those little flavors get to meet each other. It's kind of like a country dance. You know, everybody clings to each other, the boys and the girls make little silly faces and love gestures at each other. That's what this, these ingredients are doing right now. They're making themselves, you know, they're, they're getting happy. So next we're gonna go ahead and add our cherry moonshine. It's not really moonshine, I wish it was. It's actually just cherry juice. Go ahead and open that up there. It's about four cups of cherry juice right there. We're also going to add about four cups of chicken stock, even ratio at the cherry juice. And we're going to go ahead and take our cherry jam. Throw it right in there as well. Now we're going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes till it gets nice and bubbly. Then we're gonna add our pork belly. All right, now that our braise is coming to a roar and boil, what we're gonna do is go ahead and throw that seared pork belly in there. I'm gonna get a nice boil ration on that. All right, and so we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes and boil, then we're gonna go ahead and cover it with foil and put it in the oven at 350 for about two hours. Up, we're gonna do a beet coolie. 
just a nice little earthy, refreshing sauce. So anytime you're doing a coulis, a coulis is basically a puree of fresh vegetable or cooked vegetable and or fruit. So we're going to do a little bit of a golden beet coulis. It's going to complement this pork belly real nicely with the uh, smoked Gouda croquette. There we are. It's as bright as the sunshine, boy. Bright I tell sunshine. You. Sam, if you would, finish peeling those. So with this coulis, all we're gonna do is we are going to break these beets down into about half inch pieces. Here we are. Once we get them broken down into half inch pieces, I got a cup of water boiling right now with a little bit of salt. Should taste about like seawater. What we're going to do with these uh, beets. So we're going to add these straight into the water. And we just want to cook these beets till they're cooked just through. You don't want to overcook them. It's going to take approximately 30 minutes. So while Sam's finishing that last beet, we'll cut that up. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of white wine vinegar. So we're going to add a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. And then we're going to add uh, four ounces of white wine. So you can weigh all this out, but I got that eye. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna check that rib braise out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that should be good. Oh, oh, what tarnation that no thing way. all had, man. Look that fucking hand you know, back on there. I hate this damn thing. Anyway, does anybody there. out there have any duct tape? Duct tape. Oh my oh. lord! Duct tape. Oh my lord! Duct tape. Duct tape. Duct tape. Oh my oh. lord! All prayers have been answered. <laughs> it's like heaven sent. That angel hit you pretty hard in the Look face there. there. Come here. Let me get you duct tape up, boy. Yeah. This I'm, is like I'm super scared to this like, all at the same time, you know? This is like redneck super glue over oh, here. Oh, no, it works great. Yeah, well, keep that hat on there, boy. Oh, oh yeah, it's nice. Oh, it's thank nice. you very much. Dirty. He looks dirty. Duct tape fixes everything. If you can't duck it, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd come back to life at some point tonight. Yeah! All right, the next part of the dish we got for you is a little smoked Gruda croquette, which is a delicious cheese Sam and I have handpicked. And a croquette is basically we're gonna make a bechamel sauce, which is a, it's like a macaroni and cheese sauce inside of a rice. So we have a room temperature rice here. We have our smoked Gouda. A little bit of shaved Parmesan. Right here we got four ounces of butter. Once that butter melts down we're gonna add four ounces of flour. Equal parts flour butter. And once that comes together we're gonna make a roux which is a, a cooked flour. And then we're gonna add our milk. So we got about eight ounces of milk. And then we're going to add our Gouda. 
and uh, then we're gonna let it cool. It's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, hey there. We're gonna make our bechamel right now. So first we're gonna start off with the roux. Go ahead and add our flour here. Just wanna blend that up nice like. It's gonna be real nice thick right there. That's what we're looking for. You wanna get all the lumps of flour out before you add your cheese because nobody likes them little pesky lumps. We're gonna take our smoked gouda, about a cup. Put it in there. And then we got some Grand Padano Parmesan cheese. Go ahead and dump that in there as well. It's about a half a cup of that. Too much to make a little strong. So I'm going to blend it up. Basically going to be like a macaroni and cheese sauce. Might take about, about five to ten minutes to stir, depending. And add our cup of milk. Kind of stir it in lovely there, start to thicken up with that cheese and that roux. And let that heat up and turn into a sauce. Bechamel Take there, that man. bechamel and go That's put it right on top of that rice. Real nice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so One thing you want to look out for is don't overcook your rice because we still got that warm bechamel going in there. And also we're going <laughs> to cool this down and then we're going to fry them. We're going to bread them. It's like mozzarella sticks. I don't know what croquette means. That's some sort of French terminology or something. We'll spread that out. Nice buttered baking dish. Some sort of non-stick surface. There we are. Look at that. It's like a cheesy casserole. Real oh, nice and even there. I'm gonna go, go ahead and put that in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes so we can see it. We're gonna let that cool down and then we're gonna cut it up. All right, for the vegetable portion of this uh, segment, we're a pork belly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little this crucifari vegetable called Brussels sprouts. They get a bad rap, but I'm telling you, man, you cook them right, oh, you're gonna love them. You're gonna love them. All right, so what I have did here is I peeled all the leaves off of these, but what we did is we cut them in half and then we blanched them, which means we cooked them in salted water for about four minutes, and then we pulled them out and shocked them in uh, ice cold water just for about a minute, and then pulled them out of that water just enough to cool them down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this root stem off here, which is the main thing that we wanna get rid of for this dish. Those you can use in some, whatever else you want. You can make a Brussels sprout milkshake or whatever. So we're gonna peel all these leaves off here, like that. And then you can save those, don't be wasteful. Set all these leaves here aside. Then what we're gonna do, Sam, if you would, my friend, uh, he's gonna slice that bacon up. And then we're gonna start rendering that bacon down when it's about 75% cooked. With all that grease and deliciousness, we're gonna add our leaves in to the pan. We're gonna crisp them up and that's gonna be our side dish. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and pick our Brussels sprout leaves right here. And I'm gonna take them over and put them in that bacon fat. Mm -hmm. the bacon chunks. You can hear them sizzling. Sure that's Good nice and sound right there. I'm gonna grab these croquettes we worked on earlier. Throwing your knife around the edge.
All right, now it's gonna be our finished product with our bacon and Brussels sprout leaves right there. Looking perfect, bacon got a great dark caramelization on it. Make sure you wanna drain all that fat off there. While Sam's doing that, I've cut these croquettes into squares. What we're gonna do, try to keep them nice and solid. We're gonna take these croquette squares we're going to drop them onto our flour. This is like any kind of breading is you usually go into your flour first. You got it seasoned up with a little bit of white pepper and uh, salt. Get it nice and evenly coated. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop it straight into the breadcrumbs. Just a light coating of breadcrumbs. And uh, just going to keep going on these. Right, we already showed you how to fry things in various episodes, so we're gonna go ahead and take these over here to the old stove top and just fry them off real quick. So here we got our beet coulee we're working on. What we did is we braised these beets in a little bit of water, white wine, a little bit of white wine vinegar, and uh, covered it up for about 45 minutes. And if you need to, once we start pureeing this, make sure and go back in and taste it. You know, if it's too salty, if it's too sweet, if it's too anything for your taste buds, go back in there and adjust it. That's the beauty of cooking. So we're gonna drop this in here. Just gonna strap the lid on there. Sam's gonna give me some juice. mixture. We can go about four ounces of hot water and just a touch of olive oil. Olive oil is going to help it come nice and uh, creamy and emulsified. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now, how much olive oil would you say that you added to that? Uh, two tablespoons right there. All right. That's what we're looking for, friends. Now comes our favorite part of the show, the plating. So what we got here is our nice fried croquette. We're going to take our pork belly here. Oh, it feels great. And we're just going to kind of stagger them on this croquette just like this. Try to make a little teepee if we can. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our beet coulee. It's about a teaspoon. All around the plate. Nice. So we add a little bit of honey in after we reduce that down. Just like that. Nice earthy flavor. And what we did is we took our, uh, our jus, our pan jus, from the pork and we reduced it by about three quarters with the cherry juice and the cherry jam. That's gonna go right on top. Beautiful. And then, mm, that looks so delicious. We're gonna take our Brussels sprout bacon mixture here and just kinda, kinda lightly just place them across the plate in a circular oh, motion, yeah. just like that. Make sure we get plenty of bacon in there because so pork on pork is like, the way to grow for sure. Heavenly. And then for the finishing touch, Jess is going to go ahead and explain this to you. Go a little beet chip we made earlier. Just uh, take a nice beet, shave it down, a little bit of olive oil, cook it in a 350 degree oven. Forget Finally, to spat that plate for a Touch is there. Fortunately, these beets were really small that we got. And that's it. It's all pork belly for today. There you have it, pork belly. You motherfucker, hey, Jesus. What do you have on line?
Duckty fixes everything. I got a question for the audience. Do any of you have any duct tape? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome.